will. That's enough right there. The Lord will fight for you. <laughs> I had church all by myself. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Grab somebody by the hand, look them in the eyes for as long as you can possibly stand it. I know they are not as attractive as you. But look them in the eyes, look them in the eyes, look them in the eyes. I want you to help me with my sermonic title. Woo, I feel good. Help me with my sermonic title. Tell them while you trying to figure it out. God has already worked it out. That's the wrong one. They didn't want to touch you. Grab somebody on the other side. Tell them while you trying to figure it out. God has already worked it out. That's the wrong one. Turn around. Grab somebody behind you. Tell them while you trying to figure it out. God has already worked it out. battles in the entire Bible. There are other battles in the Bible that are good, but I feel like this is one of the best battles in the Bible because it truly shows not just God's work, but it also shows God's care in God's work. I like it. There's David and Goliath. Y'all know the story of David and Goliath. David has to face this big giant. It suggests to me that there'll be times in your life where you'll have a big, big problem that you'll have to face and rise up against. There's also Gideon and Gideon's army. Gideon, Gideon and Gideon's army, there was 32,000 men and then they dwindled their army down to 300. And God will sometimes show you that you don't need a whole lot of people to get a whole lot done. I'm preaching better than you responded already. There's also Elijah and the prophets of Baal. He's up against 450 prophets of Baal by himself. And he stands alone only on God's word. It suggests to me that there'll be some times where you'll have to stand alone. And the only thing that you can stand on is God's word. But this battle, this battle in particular, I like this battle because this battle has everything that a good battle should have. This battle has suspense and it has mystery. There's mystery and suspense with this battle. Somebody's saying, what is this battle? This is the battle of the Israelites versus the Egyptians. They make it to the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea moment in the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter. We arrive at the Red Sea. I like this particular battle. I like this battle a lot, Joe. I like this battle because this battle is fully equipped with, watch this, a hero and a villain. For those of you who love literary things, there is a protagonist and an antagonist. I, I like it. I like what the text is trying to do to us and for us in this particular narrative. Push somebody say whatever he just said. I believe it. I like it. I like it because you got Moses on one side and you got Pharaoh on the other side. You've got the heroic Moses who is coming back and trying to redeem himself as a person. Moses text says uh, spent the first 40 years of his life thinking he was one thing. The next 40 years of his life trying to be what God told him to be. And then the last 40, he really did the daggone thing. Push somebody and say, you still got some time left. Here it is. I like this particular text because it also, uh, it, I, I like the, the protagonist, antagonist. I like that part. But what I really like uh, is the climax of the text. The Red Sea. And as we get to the Red Sea, I like it. I hope you didn't close your Bibles. I plan on preaching from it. I can't keep you long. I got 17 minutes and 33 seconds. But watch this. Verse 1 says, Then the Lord said to 
Moses tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near this, this place. I'm gonna say this place, near the sea. So they encamp by the sea. Watch what happens. Pharaoh will think that Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion in the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. Watch this, but I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and his army. Somebody should have shouted right, right there because essentially what the text is telling us, well, this is what I need to hear. I'm just telling you what I'm telling you as I read it. Essentially what the text is saying is that you don't got to fight back against everybody that's trying to fight you because some, okay, I'm still in the text. It says, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So wait a minute, God is essentially telling Moses that you ain't got to do a daggone thing except for the thing that I'm telling you to do. And if you do the thing that I'm telling you to do, then I, God, will do what only God can do and watch how it works out in your situation. The problem, oh, I feel like preaching earlier, the problem with many of us is that we know God can do it, but we're wondering if God will do it. And in between now and in the meantime, while God is doing what God is doing, we stick and insert ourselves in God's business and try to move in ways that God never intended for us to move. So instead of helping us get to the blessing, we become a hindrance of our own blessing. I don't know what preacher to do, but somebody in here can testify that you know what it's like for things not to feel right. Things sometimes just don't feel right. And I stopped by on the last Sunday in July just to remind somebody that why are you trying to figure it out? Some of y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. They get to the Red Sea. They get to the Red Sea. I'm going to move around. I'm going to go to the end of them. Come back to the middle. They get to the Red Sea. As they get to the Red Sea, there's a problem now. They're at the Red Sea, and the Red Sea is before them. And, and, and they wondered how they're going to get to the other side. Doesn't make a lot of sense for how they're going to go. Doesn't seem right. They got to figure it out. Did my research. When I did my research, found this good show that was talking about the Red Sea moment. It said uh, that they, they, they wanted to recreate it, so they used 14 computer models, simulations to show exactly how it could have happened, and they suggested that a strong east wind that was blowing overnight could have pushed the water back at a bend where an ancient river is believed to have merged with the coastal lagoon along the Mediterranean Sea. They found that a 63 mile per hour wind lasting for 12 hours would have pushed the waters back to be about six feet deep at the least and then they could walk across because they would have to be exposed to the mud flats for about four hours creating a dry passage long enough for about two or two and a half or maybe even three miles long for them to all get through, but scholars decided that it was essentially and virtually impossible for the land to be dry enough for them to walk across. I'm watching this show and I'm thinking about it and I said, scholars factored in everything except for God. Have you ever been in a situation that seemed like it was impossible to get to the other side? People told you you couldn't do it. You might have even thought that you couldn't do it, but shifted and changed and happened and lo and behold by the time you looked up you were on the other side I wish I had about four people and I'll make five that'll just praise God for that moment that wasn't supposed to be a moment that turned out to be the best moment of your life I just need six people and I'll make seven that don't mind giving God about 30 seconds of praise because what's impossible to man is possible to God because God can do anything but they'll preach they Doing the best I can. I see my time. Yes. Yes. I'm 13 minutes and 11 seconds. I know where I'm at. You want me to get to it? Let me. Thank you. Let me tell you. Three things that the text suggests to me. Let me tell you, here's the first one. While you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out, but you gotta have faith. Let the church say you gotta have faith. 
The Israelites by this point had been enslaved in Egypt for about 430 years from Exodus 12, the 40th, 40th verse. Watch this now. Now, they had been through generations of bondage. Generations of bondage they had been through. Generations of bondage messes me up because I, I keep hearing this word in my head and people say it all the time, generational curses. Like things that might have happened that get passed down vicariously, consciously, or subconsciously to you that may have been happening before. And my, my, my I, 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 like, I, I understand that it exists, but I have a, something to come back. And here, here's what it is. Here's what it is for me. The generational curse stops when you stop it. That's a word for somebody. That's, that's, that's somebody. I don't know who was for, but the generational curse stops when you stop it. I know mama did it. I know daddy did it. I know auntie did it. I know granny Bell did it, but the generational curse stops. When you stop. Because even though they had been through all that they had been through, they had to wake up every single day with enough faith. And you know what I know that they had to keep? They had to keep the faith. Push somebody and say, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Like our moon just shouts me because, uh, uh, watch this, they, they not only believed in God. Oh, shucks, I told you I was preaching myself a little bit. They, they, this is me. They not only believed in God, but watch this, they believed in the leader. I expect a whole bunch of shouts right there. If nothing else, if nothing else, know as a leader, I got your best interest. If nothing else. But watch the text. Verse, verse 5 says, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and we have lost their services. <laughs> the Egyptians were mad at Pharaoh. They were mad at the leader. Because they said, leader, you let the workers go. Leader, the people who did all the work, gone. So if the people who did all the work you better start working. are gone, and I'm still In the work. here, who supposed to do? <laughs> so they were mad at the leader. Watch this. Verse 10 says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say that you in Egypt leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to die there and serve them than to die in the desert. So wait a minute. The Egyptians are mad at Pharaoh. The Israelites are mad at Moses. Church people be mad at the pastor. All I'm trying to tell you is when you lead something, no somebody you. Can I help every leader in here? Because you lead something, you lead your family, you lead something, and you better know somebody gonna be mad at your choice. You tired, done worked all day, come home and slave over the, over the stove. Some snot nosed kid to walk in and tell you I don't wanna go to Chick fil A. You'll be mad at the leader. But you better leave. Because as long as you're leading with a pure heart, <laughs> you know that you're doing the best that you can. And that's where your faith comes in. You gotta have faith enough that I'm leading with a pure heart. Whatever you do, lead yourself. Lean not to your own. But in all things, knowledge 
and he will. I got. I gotta let y'all go when I see my time. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. I told you, you gotta have faith. Uh, but but there, there's something else that you gotta have. You're not gonna like this, but I promise you, it's good for you. You gotta have faith, and you gotta have fear. Let the church say you gotta have fear. I know, I know. Let me be clear, though. Let me be clear. I know you didn't like that, but I know you didn't like it. I gotta ease you in on that one. I know I ain't got all the time, but I gotta get you. Uh, uh, I know you didn't like it, but let me be crystal clear. Real faith cannot exist without fear. Negro, you are preaching. So I had a Donald Lawrence moment. I had to encourage myself. Because some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, you are killing this. Why are you killing this? Because I'm just reminding myself that if I don't have fear, then I can't have faith. Because if I don't have fear enough of the situation, then there's no need for faith to enter in. If I can do it on my own, I don't need faith for that. I need faith for the mountains that I can move. I know it says if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed that you can move a mountain up, but you still ain't moving it without fear or You ain't shout. Okay, let me see if I can get you. You, you, didn't, you didn't shout yet. Let me see if I can get you. Uh, uh, it, it, I'm up here. Remember, we were just talking. Talk, talk. Okay, you get ready to dance and talk to one of my babies and, and she says I'm nervous. And I said that's good. That's good. Every Sunday I stand here, I'm nervous. And that's good. The Sunday that I stand here and I'm no longer nervous, I quit. Because if I'm not nervous, that means I'm doing it in my own strength. And I'm not strong enough to do this. I've got to stand in a strength that's stronger than myself so that I can operate in the role that God created me to operate in so I can do what God created me to do. So when you walk into something and you're not nervous, that means you're too cocky and you're too arrogant and God is going to let you fall flat on your face because you think you can do it on your own. Even though I knew I, I had done all the right things for, for us as a church and a business, I, I still was leery. I was still leery going in. I was nervous because I knew I wasn't in charge of the decision. I said something right there. I, I was still nervous and I was still leery even going in. But 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 I, but I watch a lot of Law and Order. <laughs> And I recently started rewatching Suits. And I felt like Harvey Specter walking in there. So we got this. And then I watched the judge deny everybody that was before us. And I said, God, I'm scared. No matter how good you think you are, you should always fear the judge. A healthy fear of the judge. Because Proverbs 9, 10 tells us that the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. And when you have the fear of the Lord, Psalm 27, 1 tells us, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
I gotta go, I gotta let y'all alone. I got two minutes and 55 seconds. I, I've been up here too long. I've been up here too long. I gotta get out your way. I, I told you, you gotta have faith. I told you, you gotta have fear. This, and I bid y'all goodbye. You gotta have fight. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to go. Y'all, y'all ready to go? Y'all, 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 y'all ready to go? I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. And y'all, y'all got brunch on your mind. Y'all thinking chicken and waffles. Y'all, y'all tired of me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to go, Missy. I'm ready, I'm ready to go. They tired of me. They tired of me. Y'all, y'all tired of me on the last Sunday in July. I told you, you gotta have, have faith. I told you, you gotta have fear. Fight. And I told you, you gotta have fight. You gotta have fight. I told you, you gotta have fight. And I was confused when I said, you gotta have fight. Oh, I, when I said, you gotta have fight, I thought y'all was gonna go crazy. Like, that was the point. Like, you gotta have fight. I wrote it right here. You gotta have fight. People go crazy. That's what I put. That's what I put. You gotta, you gotta have fight. People go crazy. People didn't go crazy. Sometimes, the problem is, who you fighting with? Some people will be quick to let you know, whether in word or action, that your issue is not their priority. But when it's their turn, the same people want you to make their situation your emergency. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I just stopped by to remind somebody that I'm not on your time, I'm on God's time. And because I'm on God's time, when it's my time, you better be ready to rock like I'm ready to roll. I don't need nobody who's gonna show up when it's sunny outside because I can handle that on my own. No, I need somebody to be more like Bishop Johnny Gill. I need a fair weather friend that's gonna be there to the end. Good and bad weather, time and time. Verse 13 says this, and I'm God. Moses answered the people. Watch what Moses says. Moses says, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord, and he will bring you today. The Hallelujah. Egyptians you see today, you will never see Hallelujah. again. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but that's this job of preaching for somebody. Hallelujah. We're just to find somebody that watch this, see the same say it like this. Trouble? Don't ask no more questions. I don't know who you are. I don't know your name. I don't know what name to call. I don't know if you was on the protocol I'm supposed to call. But can I tell you this? Uh, trouble don't last always. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you woke up with heavy on your mind. But can I tell you? Trouble don't last always. Verse 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I'm God when I tell you. I don't know about some of y'all, but some of y'all been moving around way too much. If God sent me on divine assignment to remind you this morning that while you trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. I wish I had about five people and I'll make six who don't mind putting your blessed hands together because you understand that God has already worked it out. What if, whatever it is that's on your mind, what if, whatever it is that's got you down, what if, whatever it is that's been holding you back, what if, whatever it is that won't let you be the best version of yourself, grab somebody by the hand and tell them the thing that you saw you will never see again. It can't stop you, it can't hinder you, it can't hurt you, it can't keep you back, it can't keep you down, it can't shut no doors, it don't have no heaven to let you into or no hell to keep you out of. I wish I had about 10 people and I'll make 11 who don't mind testifying that while I was trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. I usually stop right there. I usually stop right there. I got you. Don't sit down if you're standing. Here's why. I'm going to tell you. I usually stop right there and I will shout you all the way home or the Lord will fight for you. You just be still. I will shout you all the way home on that. I would. But this week, I kept reading the text. And verse 15 says, I always stop at 14. I don't know why. I always stop at 14. But this week, I said I want to close my sermon different this week. This week, I read 15. And 15, 15 and 16 got me. 
read this week and it said, then the Lord said to Moses, I thought it was over when, 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 when he said, Moses told the people, watch, Moses told the people, be still, the Lord will fight for you. But 15, then the, you can't take it in. You, you want me to go? Me to go. Then the Lord <laughs> said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Oh, shucks. Only a fool trips on what's behind them. And all I'm trying to tell somebody is yes, the Lord will do your fighting. But after the Lord is done fighting for you, that you got to start to pick up something and fight for yourself. Verse 16 says, he told him, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide the water so that the Israelites can go through on dry land. There's a principle in the text that suggests to me, oh shucks, that the more I fight for myself, the more God fights for me. These and saints used to say it like this, if you take one step, God will take two. And I went to seminary, and they told me that wasn't biblically sound. And it might not be biblically sound, but it sure is perfectly good. Because I've seen God work in my life. I've seen God move in my life. I've seen God do in my life. I've seen God turn my heartache into joy. I've seen God turn my mourning into happiness. I've seen God turn my chest into the testimonies. I've seen God take my failed relationships and teach me how to be better. I've seen God make my ten dollars work for me like if a thousand works for someone else. I gotta leave you here when I tell you there's a sermon in everything. I'm watching the fight last night and I'm watching Crawford fight Spencer and for years they've been telling me that Crawford was ducking Spencer but when they got in that ring it didn't look like he was ducking nobody but it suggests to me there's a principle in the fight that we can use for our fight. Crawford was essentially saying just because I didn't fight didn't mean I couldn't fight. I wish I had a hundred Don't mean I can't beat you up. And you ain't gotta be talking to people up. You can tell the devil. Uh, devil, you might have got me good, uh, but I ain't ducking you up. Uh, I've just been waiting uh, for the Lord uh, to do what God does. Uh, shake somebody's hand uh, like you gon' shake it off. Uh, and tell them while you try to figure it out. God has already worked it out to But in this case, in some cases, God will fight for me. And I'm so glad that I told you earlier that researchers and scientists say it would take an amazingly strong wind to blow the Red Sea apart. An amazingly strong wind to allow them to walk on dry land. They said the wind had to be really strong. And there's nothing spiritual about that. But I just had one question. I had one question for the scientists. I had one question for the researchers. Because they told me that if this wind blew, if the wind blew, then they could walk across on dry land. Thus making it an act of nature and not an act of God. But I had one question for the researchers. I had one question for the scientists. I had one question for the haters.
you don't know what I'm facing, Pastor. But it's heavy on my head, Pastor. That they won't leave me alone at work. Every time I go, they go. I walk in the house and the house makes me sick. Bills up to him. My house tends to come. Whatever it is. God told me to tell you. Whatever it is, be still and let God fight your battles. nervous but I'm afraid but I'm scared the same God that made the window that's what I'm going to say I was done, but if the baby can praise God, I wish I had about 150 people up and then when I stand into your feet to open in your mouth up, and tell God thank you for every time God's made the wind blow up and blow a bad situation good up. Every time God's made the wind blow up and brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light up. And every time God's made the wind blow up and gave you joy unthinkable joy up. That every time Give your peace that surpasses up all understanding up. Throw your hands up, up. throw your head back up, and tell God thank you. Because God really didn't have to do it, up. but I'm so glad. somebody's hand, you're facing something that's big for you. <laughs> and it ain't big like down the road, it might be big like this month, coming this week, whatever, it is big for you. Everybody get one person, get one person, get one person, get one person, get one person. Get one person. Don't, don't, we ain't holding hands all across the church, find you, no, 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 find you one person. And look in their eyes, find you one person, find you one person. Find you one, find you one, find you one person. Y'all just gonna be triplets anyway, all right? Find you one, find you one person, find you one person. Find you one person, one person, one person. One person. Now this is important, this is important because I told you it's important who you're fighting with. Everybody don't fight the same way, and that's okay. I had to learn that growing up. I, ne I never forget. I had to learn that growing up. I was in college, and uh, the Baltimore guys got into it with some DC guys, right? And uh, we was handling our business. We was until like three guys jumped on me, and I was down. I was down. I was down. I was down, and I could see one of my friends, and I didn't know what he was doing but he wasn't helping me. I didn't know what he was doing. And, we, and, and I'm gonna alter the story a little bit for names and safety. And we got back to the house, we got back to the house that night. And you know what happens when you get back to the house? You gotta decompress, you gotta talk about the fight. And they was like, dang, you was doing it until they got you. Was and then they got me. 
And then I, I asked a friend, I said, from under those shoes, I said, from under those shoes, I saw you. Where did you go? And he had this long, elaborate story. It was like it was a phone that had fell. I said, so you went to get the phone? I was under shoes. And I learned from that it's important who you fight with. Everybody's not a fighter, so I appreciated the last part of what he said. He said, but after I got the phone, I went and got the car. So I went from under the shoes, he phoned in the car. And all I'm trying to tell you is find you some friends. If they at least not gonna fight for you, Go get the car. Amen. Amen. Now look at the person that asked him, will you fight for me? Will you fight for me? Now answer them honestly. And if they say no, just say, will you at least go get the car? No, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, I want you to grab that hand, I want you to squeeze that hand, squeeze some life into that hand. Squeeze that hand, squeeze that hand, squeeze that hand. Look at him and tell him this, I'm fighting with you. Tell him this and mean it, I'm praying for you. Tell him this and mean it, that whatever God's will is for your life, I want that for you. Look at him and mean this, I want you. Be happy in life. In Jesus' name, put your arms around that person. Squeeze them like you mean it. Squeeze them like you mean it.
repeat after me. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Just for being you. Just for being you. I ask right now. I ask right now. That you come into my heart. That you come into my heart. Save. Save me. I believe you sent your son. I believe you sent your son. I believe he died. I believe he died. For my sins. For my sins. Rose on the third day. Rose on the third day. With all power. With all power. In his hands. In his hands. God, thank you. God, thank you. For working it out. For working it out. Now give 